Hi everyone, so today we're gonna to be talking about digital commerce. Now, I saved this for the end because really we've kind of hit upon a bunch of these concepts and questions throughout the rest of this course. Uh, but, you know, there's a couple of like low hanging fruit that we haven't really touched upon that I think it's worth going back and just kind of describing briefly, right? So when we talk about digital commerce, we talk about the idea that you're actually having a transaction over a digital platform, right? Um, and this also is sometimes called e-commerce or internet commerce, right? Or internet shopping, right? These are all kind of similar terms. I like the word digital commerce. It seems to be the most appropriate to cover a wide range of activities. Um, so there are different types of digital commerce, as you might imagine. Uh, and, you know, a couple of types we're kind of very familiar with, B2B, right? And B2C, right? Business to business transactions, business to consumer transactions. But if you think about it, you can also think about it from the other angle that there's also C to C or consumer to consumer transaction. Given the, the, the sharing economy or the gig economy as it's sometimes known, that's really become an increasing aspect of today's business world and today's digital commerce. So this is things like Uber and Airbnb, right? And there's also C to B, which is consumers selling to businesses, right? Uh, and this is a lot of times this is cases where um, businesses need, um, a lot of times it's in the wisdom of the crowds, ideation space. Businesses need an idea, right? They post kind of the constraints of the idea and then a bunch of people generate ideas for them. And, and the businesses wind up paying the consumers for that idea or their product in the end, right? Um, so just to describe it, each of these are conducted in a different way online, which is why we kind of spend some time to split them up, right? So B2C is obviously the most common type of commerce that you're gonna see online. Uh, the goal a lot of times is to reach as wide an audience as possible, right? Because you're trying to sell to as many people as possible. Um, it's not as focused on personal interaction as B2B. Um, there's a lot of shorter sales cycles, so you're looking for that. You're not necessarily looking for just a transactional system. You might be looking for multiple transactions, but the distance between when the when a person first makes contact with the company and when they make a purchase is much shorter, right? Um, so the goals of digital content for B2C companies should be focused on building customer loyalty, differentiating the product from other products, getting the consumers to make that decision as quickly as possible, making sure that they're buying as much as possible, increasing the share of wallet uh, that's respectable for that level of transaction while making sure that in the future they come back um, and creating an overall positive shopping experience. B2B, on the other hand, the sales cycles are much longer, right? And a lot of times we're talking about maybe tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars worth of business, right? And so the emphasis is on the relationship between the buyer and an individual salesperson, as opposed to having the person conduct all the transaction directly online. Therefore, the digital content goals are different. They're very different, right? The goal is to build brand awareness and thought leadership for the company, make it clear that the brand understands the consumer's needs, the customer's needs, um, and direct them towards a personal interaction as opposed to getting them to purchase something just directly online. Now, of course, that's possible in B2B, but a lot of B2B is focused more on having that interaction. C to C, as I mentioned, is kind of a new and emerging area. I mean, it's existed forever, but it's 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 growing, right? A lot of times, this is what the companies that are using online commerce in a C to C space are platform companies that give customers the ability to sell directly to each other. Um, they are, in fact, the bedrock of the sharing economy. eBay, for instance, is a classic example of this that predates the phrase, the use of the word sharing economy. Craigslist, right, Uber, Airbnb, um, we're seeing additional ones on a, on a regular basis. You know, Postmates and all these kind of things are all in that space as well. There's major, major benefits to being a platform. So if you're interested in, if you have an idea that might fit in this space, think about it seriously, right? You have little to no inventory, right? You have no physical presence a lot of times. All you're doing is connecting one group of consumers with another group of consumers. However, there's challenges, right? The fact is, your employers are your employees are consumers, right? They may not deliver the quality of service you want. They may not be able to work as well with the other consumers as you want. Um, what if a bad transaction happens between two consumers? Not to say the bad transactions don't happen in the B two C space, but here, right, it's going to be up to you to resolve this difficulty, right? And there's a lack of uniformity in terms of the brand interaction, which makes it difficult to grow, grow brand uh, aware, brand name, and brand recognition. 
C to B is a classic example where consumers create value for businesses. Uh, classic examples include things like 99 designs, uh, where companies um, pitch an idea for a design they want, and then people submit that designs and the companies pay them. Threadless, a t-shirt company that actually uh, provides value to a consumer for designing a t-shirt for them, right? And uh, guru.com, right? Which is an additional way to connect someone who might have knowledge about a particular area to um, a business that might be looking for that knowledge, right? Um, modern examples might also include things like influencer models, right? So as a consumer, I might be very interested in different brands and a consumer might interact with, a business might interact with me and pay me for promoting their particular brand, even though I'm really still retaining the kind of caveat as a consumer. Um, Borderline examples include things like UGC, right, user-generated content. So if a consumer, if a company is paying me just to post something online, right, then that 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 might be compensated, right? That might I might be paid for that. That becomes essentially an influencer model. But you can also think about user-generated content that's uncompensated, that's in some ways still a C to B business, right? So Yelp in some ways is really more of a C to B business than is a B to C business, right? It's a, all about getting the consumers to review a business and providing a value to that business in some way. So um, those are kind of the four major distinctions, not, distinctions between the different types of business. Now let's change and instead talk about the different ways you might think about providing products and interactions to the consumer, right? Um, so we're gonna go through a, like a level set here. And you know, the traditional, if you wanna go back, right, we can actually step back and say there's a step zero, which is single channel commerce, right? Let's imagine I have nothing but a storefront, the only way to purchase my product is in that storefront, right? In the physical storefront, you have to come here and you have to buy a product, right? Well, that's kind of single channel commerce. Nowadays, at least you often see multi-channel commerce, which is that there are multiple different channels by which you can purchase a product, right? It could be bricks and clicks. It could be that you can go into the physical product you can buy online. It could be that you can buy on Amazon and you can buy on my storefront. It could be that you can buy on my storefront on Amazon and on social media, right? But in that, in that, and that's like the bare minimum of what we consider digital, modern digital commerce. Now, another step up from that is what we call cross-channel commerce. This is when you encourage the same users who are engaging in different channels to use different, uh, sorry, encourage the same users who are using a channel to use a different channel. So you're encouraging users who come in to the brick store to also buy online when it's convenient for them, right? But at this time, you're still keeping the experience different between those different channels, right? So maybe the physical store experience is different than the online experience is different than the Amazon experience, right? The next step up from that is what we call omni-channel commerce. This is encouraging the same users to engage in multiple different channels, but essentially you're trying to make the experience as uniform as possible across those different experiences from the point of view of the brand. So that from my point of view, the products that the consumer sees in a um, Amazon storefront are similar to what they see when they come directly to my website, and that's similar to what they see when they come into the brick and mortar store. Now, the final kind of space that you often hear people talk about is what we call total retail. And total retail is very similar to omni, omni channel, except instead of trying to make sure that the experience looks the same from the retailer's point of view, we're trying to make sure that the consumer has a similar experience, right? So this involves kind of some of the customer relationship management that we talk about in another video, right? Where you're keeping track of the fact that in the in the brick and mortar store, they bought this, so I'm gonna know that when they come to the online store, and I'm gonna tailor it so they so that they um, so they see complementary products in the online store, right? The idea is that the customer is the center of the transaction, right? And that really, no matter where the customer is and where they're interacting with your brand, they should experience a similar kind of experience. That they should have a similar kind of effect as to what they're seeing, right? And that's the idea behind total retail. Okay. We're going to pause there before we get into actually designing, creating your digital commerce plan.